What's up everyone? My name is Cody Engel, I'm a staff software engineer, and welcome back to my Kotlin tutorial. So, in our last video we were talking about visibility modifiers and making our calculator a little bit more secure so you're not able to just set the current value from, from the outside. Uh, in this video we're going to talk about how we could take our one calculator and create another calculator using it. So with that what we're going to actually be building out and using are companion objects. And what a companion object lets you do is you can call on the calculator itself without having to have an actual instance of it. So this better calculator um, you we would let's say if, if we want to have a second calculator and say val calculator clone equals calculator dot clone and passing in our calculator this would ideally allow us to create a new calculator from an existing one so the way that we can do that is if we scroll down here to our calculator class and then at the bottom, you can play, place this wherever, but uh, for most Kotlin projects, companion objects will usually be defined at the, the bottom of the class. You just type in companion object, and then from here we can define our function, which we'll just call clone, which will take a calculator instance and then we say it will return another calculator instance and from here we can just say return calculator and with that one we will say whatever a calculator is with its current value so we'll see right here though we can't actually create this instance of our calculator. And the reason why is, well, this is an abstract class. Uh, we wanted to restrict being able to create new instances of, of other calculators, so you would want to be able to say create an instance of maybe your better calculator or a bad calculator or um, random calculator. So what we could do though is with this companion object, just kind of cut that, move it up here. Within here, so we had our remainder, if we add it to this one, instead of it being a um, calculator that we're returning, we will, we'll still just say that we're returning the calculator, but we're going to create a new instance of our better calculator. So from up here, it's no longer calling calculator.clone, but instead better calculator.clone. And then we have our calculator clone. We can ca call our print extra line function, result, and then say calculator clone dot current value, and then go ahead and run it. We will see it cloned it. It did what what we wanted it to do, um, and yeah, that would be one one route for using. Um, companion objects. Now another option that we might want, so maybe instead of say having a clone function we can just say fun um, empty and then have that return a calculator instance and it can return you know, our new instance of our better calculator but instead of it being anything at all it'll just be you know zero and so what we can do Go ahead, call print extra line result. We call our better calculator dot empty dot current value. Go ahead and run it, and then you know, we get zero. So when when might you use a companion object? Well, the reason for these is or the way that I'll usually use them is for kind of factory-ish methods where I want to define a specific state 
for a calculator to be in, you know, a specific state for an object to be created in. So, you know, in this case, we say we want to create an empty calculator, uh, which, you know, in, in our case would be defined as like a calculator that is going to be defaulted to zero. Another one, though, would just be saying we want to clone a calculator. So we want to take an object and just duplicate it. So you could do it with the data class, but, uh, you know, in, in our case, just for example's sake, we, we're just saying, you know, clone. You know, another thing that we could have done is we could have said, you know, fun fix is going to take a calculator or rather, you know, instead of a, that calculator, it can take a bad calculator and it can return a better calculator from it. And so with that, you know, we would just do return. We could call our, our clone function with the calculator and then type cast it over to a better calculator just so it matches up with that. And then from here, you know, we just have our, well, let's say we have our bad calculator and everything runs fine. And then we have our calculator clone. Let's say instead of that, we want to say fix. So it'll take our bad calculator and then it will fix it with not, you know, it's no longer the bad implementation, but rather the good implementation. And so uh, you, you might use this when you are transforming from one object that is similar into another object. And so that's really all I have on companion objects. You can do some other things, like you can do uh, like vals, uh, to say like, I don't know, zero. Uh, and then you can even define, you know, this this is going to say you should define it as a constant. So we can just say const val zero. And because it's a const, you don't have to, but just the general nice thing to do is to capitalize it. It just makes it a little bit more obvious in your code. Uh, but then, you know, we can call our better calculator, and then we get dot zero there. Uh, you can even just have it be specific instances. So let's say, you know, we, we had our empty calculator, but let's say we wanted to do uh, val and say uh, negative calculator. And then the negative calculator will, oops, calculator, will return our better calculator, but no, with some negative initial value. And so we can call better calculator dot negative calculator just to kind of get that default one. So companion objects can be really useful. Uh, I tend to use them just because for readability's sake, just to kind of attach other other things that have to do with that object specifically that just make it a little bit easier, kind of get a little bit of convenience. So since the calculator would have numbers associated with it. Maybe you just want to have a constant for what zero would be or make it more obvious that it is zero. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when new videos are uploaded. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.